and we'll just hold, keep hold of it until we can find you. They're going to find us. Find yes, we're going to gonna try to find you. I think the recording is on. Okay. So. Thank
room and talk about why each of us is here. We could introduce ourselves and then we'll go into the main workshop. Uh, I'm Kat Wall. Um, I don't know that much about permaculture, so I'm here to learn just as much as I am to do this workshop. And thank you very much for having me here. Um, I have been doing a project in Bristol over the last nine months looking at what factors enable change um, and what barriers prevent change and thinking through some of the actions that you can take to reduce the barriers and increase the enablers, uh, especially in the context of looking at social justice and how you create more equal societies, especially at the city level. And I wanted to bring some of that learning that I've been doing in Bristol in the city context um, to apply it to other problems that people who are operating in different contexts might face. So I think there are a lot of tools that exist that cross a lot of different issue areas, um, whether it's social change, um, in a social justice context, in an environmental context, in a community project. Hello, come in, welcome. Um, we're just going around introducing ourselves and saying why we got here on CAT. Um, and uh, I met Amelia when I moved to Bristol, um, who talk, told me a little bit about a thing called force field analysis, uh, which is what we're going to try and explore today. Um, and wanted to kind of try and bring those two things together. So just here to sort of share and, and learn. Yeah, so I'm Amelia. I'm doing research about local energy system transitions. Started off very much looking at the community energy sector and realised that the importance of interdependence with local authorities and how much local authorities can do. Um, and this course field analysis says that we're going to do something that um, I've used in my work and that's been in a very much kind of local energy system transition context. Um, and really interested to see what people who are involved in permaculture will bring into that process. Um, and when I met Kat, we started talking about theories of change and how we both are interested in the way that local activity can lead to systemic change. Um, so that's what we want to explore here. Um, so, we're going to introduce ourselves. I'm Tanya, and I'm a psychologist, so I suppose I'm fundamentally interested in change. And I think, I just think things like this are the key because I think we, we know lots, we've got lots of information about what we could do differently, but we find it really difficult to do that on an individual and a collective basis. And I, I was thinking something the other day, I think it's really interesting when you think about smoking and alcohol use and drug use, if you think about health behaviour change, we all probably do stuff that we know we shouldn't do because it's not good for us, but we find it hard to change. And then think about more nebulous stuff like out there happening sometime to somebody else or us in the future, climate change, of course that's going to be harder, so this is key for me. Hi everyone, I live in a permaculture um, village in South Africa where people from all different walks of life get together. My big job is the um, enterprise development. We are in a um, voluntary land reform model where the reform work is now as uh, owner's part of the farm, but it doesn't help if you now have a home and you don't have jobs, uh, you don't have education, anything like that. Um, it's difficult to bring about that change. We feel often that when you work tirelessly for a long time, and the change that you would like to get about, bring about, the system resists that, and resists that. So that is why we're here. We try to learn more on how to bring that about. Hi, I'm, I'm Felipe. Um, I'm involved in a project in Birmingham called Mother Gardens. Um, the idea is very much about um, growing, propagating and sharing plants. So plants is kind of almost the, the medium to bring about um, kind of more networking. For me, that's my interest in particularly this workshop, is you know, kind of learning tools to be able to take back to, to feed kind of a, a growing network. And that's probably my, my, one of my passions for social change is about uh, you know, trying to imagine um, and creating networks where you basically open up to communities all over the city. Uh, and for me, it's kind of acknowledging that you know, in every community and in every part of the world, there's always going to be at least a small group of people or one person who has a passion for creating a better world or to helping other people. So for me, it's about tapping into that all the, all that the, that kind of the resource that's out there through kind of building this network. I'm going to Mark. I'm a work with Quakers in East London. Uh, I did a permaculture design course quite a few years ago. I don't have a place now to do it, but I'm um, just getting along. Um, I'm Chuka. Um, I'm part of a transition group in um, with them. And, uh, we've been going for about seven or eight years and no. Um, I suppose it's it is no. we've got we've got 
we sort of in touch with a lot of people, but actually sort of getting a sort of change on the big local level, that's so difficult. Yeah, so that's one. Hello, I'm Robert. I'm a student and I teach uh, in permaculture and I teach with Steve Reed in France uh, in PDCs and I do some designs and now in the city I, I could um, see with the, the city gardeners, I don't know how to say, the, the people who manage this and they, they are very motivated to do something in the, in the city and so that's great but I, I'd like to know how to involve people as well in the process. That's um, I'm Matthew, uh, I'm from South Africa and I work for an, an irrigation company there. And yeah, this is actually my first time to permaculture content, so I'm just trying to basically get to grips with the whole idea and try to understand what it's all about. So, yeah, just try to do it. I'm John, I'm Australian by nationality, living in Italy in a small village which has all the qualities, positive and negative, of the true community where everybody helps each other because they assume that everybody will help each other anyway because they're a community, it's wonderful in some ways, but it does have the negative aspect. And I'm fascinated, I've been an activist for change all my life with and without permaculture for the last 35 years and I'm fascinated uh, not only by the change itself, of which I've always been a part, but by, by the resistance, what you referred to, Tanya, and even when something has to change, there's this resistance and this awareness that we, and I'm including me, absolutely, um, am uh, always a balk of change. It's not, even though the experience of, of change have, have always been ultimately positive, one way or the other, still, it fascinates me that I'm uh, a balk at taking that, those steps, and so I'm really fascinated by all aspects of change, and uh, that's why I'm here. Hi, my name is Imola. I'm doing a permaculture design course right now, and um, I came here actually to, to get more involved, to see the whole idea, what's, what's exactly about it. However I'm feeling, I know, but still I'm feeling it's not in our school. Uh, which might 
delay us getting our train. We might find ourselves talking to a friend for too long, which means that we miss the train time that we said we would get. Um, or we might be packing our bag and we might have started that process too late, again meaning that we're going to miss our train. Um, there are also things that might help us to get our train, um, the enablers, things that will move us in the direction of getting our train on time. So these could be things like a desire to be punctual. We might feel like it's important that we get to places when we say we will. Um, there might be um, a desire to get home for dinner. If we know that dinner is going to be particularly tasty that night, that will energise us to get to that train on time. We might have planned in advance and know what train we want to get, so that knowledge is saying, okay, well my train is at five minutes past six, so that's the train I need to aim for, and that will motivate us to get there for that specific time. Um, and also the structure of the systems of train timetables. Uh, train timetables are quite rigid, they don't just come and go whenever you feel like it, you kind of have to know that that, that system is in place, and if you want to get your train on time, you have to meet the conditions that that system is setting up for you. Yeah. So these are all things that are kind of pushing us towards catching the train on time. These are things that are pushing us away from catching the train on time. Um, so that's the first stage of the workshop. So I'm going to ask you to think about what the drivers, you know, the enablers, and what the barriers are. Um, and then the second stage of the workshop will be thinking about what actions you can take. So to continue with our work example, um, this desire to get home for dinner could be strengthened by making sure that it's a really tasty dinner to come back to. <laughs> um, this talking to a friend for too long could be weakened as a barrier by saying to a friend that I bump into on the way to the train station, sorry I'm rushing to catch a train, I don't have time to chat. <laughs> um, the desire to be punctual could be strengthened by making agreements with my housemates that I will be there on time. Um, knowing what time train to get can be strengthened by getting a train timetable and checking the train timetable. Um, the bicycle puncture could be weakened as a barrier by keeping my bicycle in really good condition keeping it well maintained, and also by leaving time for spare, just in case I get a puncture, so that I've got time to sort it out yeah. on the way to the train station. So that's the kind of second step of the workshop, and then there's going to be a third step. Where we're going to think about circles of influence, and who it is that can do these actions. So we're going to take the actions from the second step, and think about things that are inside my area of control, things that are inside my area of influence, and things that are outside of my area of influence and control. And for this exercise, we're going to ask you to think about the kind of the permaculture community. So, what things can the permaculture community control? What things can the permaculture community influence? And what things are outside of the influence of the permaculture community? Um, so things like making sure it's a really tasty dinner to come back to, that might be in my area of influence if it's someone else who's cooking the dinner rather than me, mm. rather than my area of control. Uh, but leaving time to spare is in my area of control, so that would go in the middle. Um, Again, like making an agreement with housemates that you'll be on time would be in your area of control. But there might be other things that aren't in your area of control or influence. So, for example, if the train breaks down um, and you miss that train um, because it's not running anymore, there's nothing really you could have done about that. So that's completely outside your area of influence or control. Yeah. It just helps us when we're thinking about what actions we actually want to prioritise taking, either as ourselves as individuals or as a group. It's a good idea to focus on those things you actually can do something about. Because often we spend a lot of time thinking about all of this stuff, which then becomes quite disempowering um, and feeling like we actually aren't moving anywhere. Um, so this tool is much more to help us prioritise the actions that we want to take going forward. Does that make sense, roughly, as a, as a process that we're going to use? Great.
Okay, so now we're going to ask you to split into three groups of three, um, kind of cluster around different bits of the table, and we're going to have three different um, goals to work towards. So you may want to choose which goal you're particularly interested in. There are different scales and there are different sectors. So the first one is participation in a community allotment project that reflects the diversity of the local area. So that's kind of scenario where there's a community garden or a community allotment, but the people who are participating and benefiting from that project are not very representative of the wider diversity of that area. Maybe it's only people who are already really interested in environmental issues, um, like the people who are more educated or more privileged in some way who are currently participating in that community garden, and we really want to increase that diversity so that many different people who participate. Yeah, sorry, I thought that was the easy one, but thinking about it, the community garden, it's not actually easy. It's definitely kind of difficult. The second one is um, about transport. So the goal is to create an affordable, accessible, and environmentally friendly transport system in the local authority area. So we've zoomed out one level. We're now looking at a whole local authority area and we're thinking about how to make the transport system, whether it's an urban kind of city area or whether it's a rural area, um, how do we create a much more sustainable, affordable, accessible public transport system? And the third one, we've zoomed out again. We're now looking at national and we're saying how do we create an energy policy at a national level which supports the transition to a low carbon energy system? Chances are there'll be more things in the kind of circle of control here than here, but maybe not, and it's worth thinking about what things we can all control within each of those different areas. Um, so because we knew there would be quite a lot of diversity in terms of interest areas, we picked the examples ahead of time. They may not be directly relevant or relevant at all to the work that you do, but they're just useful as a tool to help you practice the exercise so that when you go back to the work that you do, you can apply it. And so the participation in the community allotment project group, if you can circle around here, and the creating an affordable, accessible, and environmentally friendly transport system will be this side, and then at the back will be the national energy policy. Um, we've got tens and we've got post-it notes, as any good workshop will have. Um, and we'll give you um, the green, Post-it notes will be for your enablers, so things that will motivate you towards your goal, that will enable you to reach your goal. Things that are in the current world and the things that are pushing you towards it. Yeah. yeah. And then the pink stickers, the pink post-it notes, will be those barriers, things that will be stopping you. And what we're going to ask you to do is just take 20 minutes to think about the enablers and the barriers, and then we'll move on to the actions. Yeah. And so just 20 minutes on enablers and barriers, and do move around if you're able. So, so move around. As in now, just pick one part of the room and stay there for the next 20 minutes. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm awesome. And one of the real challenges with this exercise is to make sure that when you're looking at barriers and when you're looking at enablers, those are actually things in the real world now that are preventing you from moving in that direction or things that are kind of pushing you in that direction rather than actions. Definitely last things. So, so the, 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 the first stage is not about actions, it's about things you can do, it's about things that are already there. Right? And try and be as detailed and specific as you can be.
we start with barriers? So start, start with barriers. Yeah, yeah, start with barriers. It might be easy just to start with barriers. Spend 10 minutes on barriers, then 10 minutes on enablers just to get you going. Oh, it's often easier to think about the problem first. Get those out of the way and then we'll do the hard part after.
social get, barriers. If it gets to a stage where there are too few people using Sorry, the rate in which the the frequency sorry, the frequency so this gets too small for people to actually use it because it's it's not it's not useful anymore. Because if the frequency is too too low and to get from
Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
So it's actions that okay. will strengthen specific blue, the specific green post-it notes, or actions that will weaken <clears throat> the barriers on your pink post-it notes. So think of actions related to those specific things. Yeah. So maybe the first step in your head is to look at the post-it notes you've got there and think about which ones you think are the most important. So I might look at this and say, oh yeah, I think the really key barrier is the frequency of service. That's the one I'm going to create an action for. Yeah. So these actions. Yeah. Oh, oh, what level? Or at any level. level. Yeah. Yeah. Something you think would be an effective action. How many do you want us to pick from those? Um, we've given you three post-it notes. If you want to do more, that's fine. We've got spare. And you can do three actions for one post-it, or pick three different post-its and do one action for each. Sorry. about the actions, then put who it is that should do this action.
Yes. In fact, yeah. about yeah. now in the last few years, there's a lot of environmental issues. Oh, that is from the training. Why? Because there's some people who just have to settle for a week. Yeah. I know there's some plants that you, you can grow together, but like things like pumpkin, well, in something for brassicas. Yes. You know, they're just really, really kind of. Racy. They're very racy. They're very keen to get together. Yes.
Okay, I think we're going to bring it back. Thank you very much for participating very energetically in that exercise. That was really great to see so many conversations going on. Um, looking around the room, it seems like there's a lot of stuff in the area of influence. Some things in the area of control and some things beyond our control. One of the really useful tools I found with this exercise is that you can take any of the actions that you've come up with and do the whole exercise again. So, for example, if you've got um, something in your area of influence, so for example, changing the way we tax something, you can lobby, you can push the government to do that. It's not directly in your area of control. Mm -hmm. So you can then set that as your new goal. So change the way the government taxes. And then what are your enablers to do that? What are the barriers? And then what are the actions, again, that you can do to move towards that goal? Um, so it sort of breaks it down again uh, and enables you to move forward even on those things that might feel quite remote from your area of control and influence. It helps you like, redress some of those other things as well. Um, so what I'm going to ask to do now is um, if we just take a moment just to think about this exercise um, and what we've been doing and, and what, what we found useful from it, just to think about something in your own work that you might be able to apply it to. Just if it, if, would it be useful to a problem that you might be exploring in your own, in your own world that you're working on right now? Um, and then we're just going to go around and share some of the things we might be able to use this on. Um, and then we'll move into the close. So if you just take a couple of minutes to think about what this tool might be useful for in your own work. This tool generally? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And 
um, and this unblobs it. <laughs> yeah, because I, I actually look at it from, instead of just being sort of overwhelmed by this gun, gun, gun that sort of sticks to me, I can actually see the sources and the solutions in a more refined and defined way. And that's, that's really helpful. To, to a, it gives points to start with. If I just see it in isolation as the glob, then, well, it's a glob. A glob doesn't really have any shape as such. It's mm -hmm. just this undefined area of, of dissatisfaction. And so I found this really useful for, for that. Thank you. Yeah, yeah um, I think, I think that um, I'm pretty much the same. Uh, basically, it's it's basically helped me to um, almost uh, compartmentalize um, each each issue as it stands, and almost um, almost gives me like a um, a tool set to kind of uh, define the problem and then work towards a solution for it, which is which is quite useful because I think often often people get um, get stuck up on on the problem and they don't actually come up with <laughs> with any with any um, like set of solutions for it. So yeah, that's that's pretty much pretty much what I, I got. Cool. Nice exercise. Mm -hmm. Well I didn't get the chance to participate in the whole exercise, but uh, uh, as I got the idea I think this is a very useful tool to try to bring back home and try to apply in, uh, in both our small community in which we try to implement change mm -hmm. and also at, uh, at the city level. Mm -hmm. We're not up to the national yet, but mm -hmm. still, we would love to see more uh, more change in the way the local government applies or implements sustainability, at least in terms of waste management and mm -hmm. urban gardening and a few other, other things. So, thank you very much. It, it looks like an interesting model to apply. Where is Romania? Uh, Romania, not West Romania. Yeah, I found it very helpful as a kind of analytical tool, but also it's also very. But there's also an awful lot of interactions among all different pieces. Mm -hmm. And it also occurred to me that we were, um, some of the things that were, let's say, enablers are somewhat negative. Mm -hmm. um, for example, in the case of national energy policy, things like climate change, economic energy shortages, uh, these things. Um, if one were going to be real kind of guerrilla activists, you could say, well, in cases where it's not going to actually really hurt or kill people, a bit of uh, selective sabotage. <laughs> <laughs> Are you thinking much worse of you, actually? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, hmm, line the entire government up against all and shoot them. <laughs> 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 I also working on so many projects and so expansive, it's, there's a tendency for our groups to be very overwhelmed by all the work that needs to be done. And so to use this as a process to just narrow down some of the, narrow down what's what, and prioritize um, based on who's actually available is like, okay, this small group, these are the things we're really thinking about, and then we can use this as a way to prioritize. So I and I also think I could do that for my own, my own life, my own work, um, to, to decide where I want to put my energy. So thank you. Um, yes, like other people, I find it really useful. What I really liked about it is just how kind of simple it is as well, and it seems um, it can be used with different groups because I know there's a lot of these really, I mean, very useful kind of similar methods and tools within permaculture. Some of them are a bit too complicated. Um, I personally work, uh, say for example, with, um, do a lot of, kind of well-being work uh, with different kind of bottom wide ops, and I, I wonder whether this could even be used for people for sort of personal well-being as kind of as part of kind of group, um, you know, psychoeducational kind of methods as well. So, yeah. But then it could be used. It seems like a lot like here it could be used for you know you can scale it up to you know small grander. 
um, I used of projects, little projects with people uh, like running at well. But now I, I start to have uh, projects in the year with, uh, with close friends and um, in the city. And it's just terrible because <laughs> we cannot speak properly. Uh, I, I proposed wrong time, uh, times um, facilitation in the work. Um, yeah. So this kind of tools I, I propose, but often, mm -hmm. and I will propose this one because I think it's quite simple um, and it's, it's very visual. So yeah. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so I kind of put two words and as well what I found is that there's quite often being overwhelmed mm -hmm. by the extent of the problem and not any way to start. And this feels like if you have a yarn, you kind of feel where you get the starting point and of one action thing and it is so practical with regard to yours where I'm like an event in the nation that lives in the event. Such a simple thing, which just which is this aha moment for me. I think this tool is great to identify this action point. Start, instead of thinking about the problem and worrying about it, just what can I do? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I like that. I wrote down the thing about the blob. <laughs> 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 okay, yeah, yeah, I feel the blob. I think that's kind of kind of what I came. I'm interested in change, and I can see lots of domains I could use this. And I was really amused, to be honest, when you said about working with friends. Because I was sort of just feeling like, oh, what's the point? I did a permaculture design for the garden and I spent hours arguing with my partner about IBCs, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so he thinks I shouldn't have one, I think I should, you know. And I think I'll just sit him down and some post. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Slightly different. Mm -hmm. yeah. Force 
you feel the analysis. analysis. Yeah. And the thing that it goes back to Lewin, who is an actual researcher. Um, What's the answer? I think it's Lewin, but I need to double check that. Kurt Lewin? Yeah, I think so. How do you spell it? And the force field is it's quite intuitive for an engineer because you've got these forces pushing you away from your goal and forces that are pushing you towards it and it's about how you shift the balance of those forces. So I found that a really powerful, intuitive thing to kind of see these arrows and the other arrows. I saw a couple of people taking photos. So if at the very end you want to take photos of any of the things that come out, you're welcome to do that. Um, we're just going to do a little... Yeah, so we've got five minutes before lunch um, and part of the tradition um, that I like to practice in workshops is to really in, in, enhance and encourage feedback. Um, so this is quite a new workshop for both of us working yeah. together, doing this sort of work in a group um, and we really value your feedback. So what we have on this board, we will have, is three questions. So what worked about this workshop? What did you find worked really well? What didn't really work? Um, and what would you change? Um, and then if we can just invite you just to pick up there are pens and post-it notes at the front and just give a little bit of feedback to us so that the next time that we do something like this we can improve it and, and make it better. And then, then when we've done the feedback we'll go to lunch. Oh, good. Okay. So nothing, change nothing. So I just want to say one thing. Um, Mark told me about some product called Suga. Suga? Suga. Yeah, Suga. Suga. Right. Suga. So I was thinking, if we're going to do all these post it mm -hmm. that we could develop some kind of blue product that was more eco, would be yeah. great. <laughs> Is it what? Because we're using post notes all the time. I use them all the time, and for our work, it'd be great if they were somehow this kind of a base which could more than one super and then you could recuperate it and use it again. So there's another nice project to do to the thing. What is the um, so if, if you'd like to invite you to come here and we Sorry.
what I've had already done is it's out packages around the UK, but also it's worldwide to create a network with other sites and similar things. So I wonder if it's something I'm just trying to see where it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay, we're having a nice day. Where are you again? It's in Birmingham, in the middle of the day. No, I'm sorry. Yes. Anyone here? Oh, it's Bernard. Yeah, why not? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh,